tonight in this seven-week course that we've called the Seven Churches of the Book of Revelation. Uh, we're going to talk about what was a common theme to every church uh, at the close of the message to those churches, and that is, he that hath an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Very important. He that has an ear, Revelation 2, 7, but it's all through each one of the churches he says this. He that hath an ear, or receptivity, mm -hmm. not just a physical ear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He that has receptivity, <laughs> receptivity, reps, I can't say it now, receptivity. receptivity. You're supposed to you help mess me. me up in my mind. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> Let him hear, and the word hear there is understand. What the spirit, the Greek word for spirit there is pneuma. Mm. We know he's the third person, but he's literally the life of truth. Mm. The life of truth. Hear what the spirit says. I like this Greek word, it's lego. <laughs> it literally means when he's talking about what he says, it's not just necessarily speaking a sentence. But literally, it's talking about uh, specific teaching as to decree. Hmm. Are you soaking it in so far? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, specific teaching as to decree. Is that like when you're, you're speaking, but you are declaring the decree? decree. Yeah. This is really yeah. And in this case, it's the Spirit saying it, so it's a decree from God. Everything the Spirit says is absolute truth. So he's speaking as the voice of the King. So, literally, it's the Lego. Dr. that word receptivity, is it the same word as perceiving? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be for sure, because you can't receive without perceiving. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So the Spirit, uh, the Hebrew word for Spirit, capital S, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, is Ruach, or Ruach, I think it's Ruach. ruach. <laughs> it means, you know what, I'm going to tell you, I have to say this even though it makes, I shouldn't, but it'll just show who I am. I'm convinced that most of the Klingons they named on Star Trek <laughs> were from... Hebrew words. Because there's a ruach. I think most of the Klingon language is scripture. <laughs> or they took it from scripture. They took it from Hebrew words. Just had to throw that in there. So the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach or breath, wind. But it also means to bring life to the mind. Wow. Okay. Bring life to the mind. Are we good? So, often in religious traditions, God's Spirit was treated like an emotional jumpstart battery. Or a visitor for revivals. I don't know how many times I've heard, we need a visitation. We need a visitation. And God's up there saying, I want a habitation. I want a habitation. <laughs> So they treated oftentimes in the past, traditionally, like he was a visitor for revivals or a public publicity agent for miracles, signs, and wonders. Well, it's like in the Old Testament, when they, just the old, the, God would come upon the person just to do that. They, yeah, that's it. yeah. But oftentimes, hmm. tradition has treated him almost like an accessory yeah. for something they wanted to get accomplished. Because that's where we were back then and so forth. So, also he's been known to be a consoler in difficult times. Or a superpower for achieving occasional great feats. Hmm. So these are some of the concepts that people had with the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like he would jump in, amaze you, and jump out again. <laughs> he would come and... And be that, you know, consoler or, and he is that. He does do that. But comforter there, you see, is a Greek word, parakletos. 
and it means come fortress. That's where we get our word confirm. He is an advocate. The comforter is an intercessor. The comforter comes to stand alongside, and I like this one, to reinforce. So it's not just, you know, patting us on the back saying, poor baby. That's not the comforter. The comforter says, I've come to show you some reinforcement. Amen? So we need to kind of begin to understand from a kingdom perspective, and I know we do have it here, but for those out there, it might be the first time they've heard the Holy Spirit from that perspective as the governor. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. The kingdom is a government, yes? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And it has a governor. Yes. All kingdoms, if they have a government, must have a governor. Mm -hmm. And the governor here is the extension of his governance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the governor is in another land, on behalf, like when uh, Britain came and colonized, hello, Hi. came and colonized the Bahamas. Dr. Moreau tells this story. He told this story often. Mm -hmm. Everything got changed into the way Britain does things. Yeah. Yeah. The different side of the road. They drink tea at noon, even though it's hot and 80 degrees. He says, we wore suits. We didn't wear suits before. We had to act like Britain because they colonized us. And so Britain sent a governor that represented the queen. In this case, the Holy Spirit represents the king. Yes. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because I want us to understand why he said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches. Because literally what he's saying is, I've been, I've, I'm the extension of, of God to give you his word on how to straighten yourself out to become his government. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we're going to talk about the extension, the expansion, and the excellence. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit as an extension of the king to order the life of his kingdom in the earth. Now, I know many of you, because this is a kingdom church, you know some of this, but, but I really believe for some that are listening, they may not have ever understood mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in this dimension. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going slow. And plus, how many of you believe God might give you a fresh revelation? Amen. Amen. In this dimension as a governor. As yeah, a governor. as governor. So he's an extension of the king to order the life of his kingdom in the earth. So Jesus was the word made flesh. Yes. Firstborn of many brethren. Mm -hmm. Jesus, by what he did, legally restored connection to God. But then he said in John 16, 7 and 8, Nevertheless, I, I love this. Man, I'm, I'm getting emotional already because <laughs> I can almost hear him tell this and I would have loved to have been there. Yeah. Wouldn't you? When he said this, I mean, yeah, we are. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Not just necessary or I got to, but it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, the comfortress will not come unto you. So really at that time then what he's saying is that the Holy Spirit wasn't here yet. No, I mean, it, it, not it, in that In form. all of us. Yeah, not, it he was, was on people, but he wasn't he was, in us yet. Mm -hmm. and so he said, I've got to go. I, I've often said, it's as simple as I got to go so I can come. Yes. In fact, in our life, sometimes something's got to go so something can come. Yes. Wow. Amen. Amen. But it's very funny that we don't want to let go what needs to go. Yeah. So what needs to come forth? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen. This is this is uh, hear what hear what Evangelist Bridget just said. Would you say it again? As if sometimes we find it very difficult to let go. 
that which needs to let go. Yeah. Not knowing we're blocking what needs to come. come. That's exactly right. Oh. That's exactly right. <laughs> and a lot of times it'll be even something God used us in before. Yes. Yeah. Or we may think it's our ministry. Yes. Yeah. Or we may think it's something he needs for us to be able to communicate his kingdom. And if he says it's got to go, I mean, look, Jesus had to go. So the Holy Spirit could come. Oh, that's us. Go ahead. Stop. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm reading the news later in the news. <laughs> Is it okay if I have fun tonight because I'm in that kind of mood? Okay. The comforter cannot come if I don't go. In fact, it's expedient. It's the next thing on the list. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now notice the son of the kingdom is going back to the kingdom. So he can send the governor of the kingdom here. If I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He didn't say he will come and give you an emotional no. jolt, although he does that. <laughs> but he came for the purpose of reproving the world of sin. In other words, correcting what was crooked and of righteousness to establish the government of the kingdom and of judgment on how to transition it. So, I don't know if out there some of you have ever thought of the Holy Spirit as the governor. Mm -hmm. But it's important because he's governing you. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> or hopefully he is. Hopefully he is. Now, in John 16, uh, uh, a few verses down, I love what Jesus said here. John 16, 13, and 14. How be it when he, the spirit of what? Sure. Say it out loud. Truth. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> he is called the spirit of truth. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide there is another word for govern. He will govern you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you, I love this, this shows the prophetic nature of the Spirit of God. He will show you things to come. He shall, look at this, he shall glorify me. And he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He will receive of mine and will show it unto you. In other words, just as Jesus said, I don't say anything except the Father says it. He says now the Spirit will not say anything except I tell him to say it. The Father, the Spirit, the Word and the Spirit. Yes. Because we are, I've been practicing a lot of meditating on this. Um, we still think in terms of the first part of this that you were talking about. Yeah. You know, that the Holy Spirit's out there, he's out there, but he's in here. Yeah. And we are in him. We yes. abide in him. Mm -hmm. We're never outside of him. And if we're in him, then we're in his kingdom. Yeah. yeah. Because it's all one. Yeah. Yes. And just, we have to think that way yeah. all the time. Absolutely. We practice it. Absolutely. Yes. Because otherwise that old thinking keeps mm -hmm. coming yeah. out. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's so ingrained in Christians, the, the sin mentality. Yeah. Well, you got to get over it because, you know, I, you know, I did wrong and I, I'm trying to get over it all the time. When, when in, in kingdom order, <laughs> we don't have a sin mentality. Yeah. Sin we don't talk about sin. I was thinking about this too. Um, God... He is the judge, the perfect judge, yeah. because he knows all things. Yeah. Right. So if, if he hadn't provided for the finished work on the cross, yeah. 
sin, we would still have a sin consciousness and sin would still be held against us. How could anybody ever be saved before this righteous judge? Mm. There had to be a finished work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Right. That's what it is. And also, we have to yeah, be, be governed by what um, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit Amen. is teaching us. Amen. But because we have we are making some choice. Mm -hmm. Religion leads, but not entirely. Still yeah. lurks. Mm -hmm. So we will find yeah. ourselves in some religious ways, even in the way we pray. Yeah. yeah. With the yeah. sinful nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reminding God about things that He already told us in 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 in, in um, what's the book? I think it was Hebrews or mm -hmm. something. But I, I don't remember. Right. What you're trying to remind me. Of, yeah. It's a violation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. bring that me to something, but that's religion mm. trying to hold on to us not yeah. to walk in a full kingdom mind. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, so you know, yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. I think I think we need to see also, because we could ask ourselves the question, okay, I'm coming into the truth. Yeah. I'm full of the Holy Spirit, the very life of God. He's supposed to be governing me. Why do I still have difficulty? And I asked the Lord this question one time, and, and what he gave back to me was, he said, religion has a culture. Yes, it has. And culture is so difficult. It's a comfortable yeah. culture. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it can even be miserable. And people, yeah. people yeah. get used to it. Yeah. Culture in many, many churches overrides the anointing and the voice of God. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because yes. culture... Uh, is so, in fact, we see it even in our country right yeah. now, uh, how they're trying to make these changes and think they can, and people aren't necessarily as stupid as they may think they, <laughs> yeah. because they're saying, uh, that, I don't know why that don't sound right. They may not even know how to hear God, but they know something's not right about this because there's a culture in her country, our country, you know, your country, and we, there's also a culture to religion. And so we can hold on to these sweet memories uh, and reminisce about things that, oh, wow, I remember, you know. Um, and I remember, I'll just give you the example. It becomes our, our, our God if yeah. we dwell on that and, oh, I wish those times would come back when we got the altar and we, you know, yeah. were slain the spirit yeah. or whatever, you know. I know I have. I have fallen down too. But it's not that, about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's okay to remember if we don't stay there later yeah. because some of those times were powerful. Yeah. That's true. Transformation. That's true. But yes. the word, the word yes. culture comes from it's the word true. cultivation. Yeah. Yes. So it, it didn't just happen overnight. As you like to say, it's it was fun. cultivated. It what? It's all a process. It's a process, but cultivation, that's true. That's right. Cultivated to be able to become a culture. So what we're going to do is cultivate the culture of the kingdom so that mm -hmm. we can live in it fully this and free. It's important, you know, Sister Judy, what you just said, kind of tickled in my mind because memory is good, but it can also be a weapon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. If we don't know how to, that's true. because we can be stuck in what used to, when we used to be yeah. so badly that we are not even trying to hear yeah. what God is trying to oh, yeah. bring us into. But the yeah. comfort is it. That's why He said, "I'm going to tell you the truth." Yeah, because some of the things that we hold on to at the time, some as true, maybe so precious. Mm. Memories, good and bad, can be really detrimental to yeah. us yes, if true. we don't make way mm -hmm. for the new. For the new. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. somebody. Maybe Especially when we're in transformation. Transformation. Yeah. Because it's difficult and we don't like to. Yeah, they change. So that one is easy to fall back on. I wish the yeah. good old days. You know, yeah. And really, that's called a dead work. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> because Dr. Rick Wright he said he shall guide you. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Guides you into all truth, so yeah. we need to be guided. He teaches by transformation. Yes, I love that one. That's how he teaches, not by just yeah. instruction, but yeah. by transformation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm convinced that God didn't give us a memory just to use on the past. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But he gave us a, a memory to be prophetic <laughs> because he's already got it done. And he's already given us a memory for it before it happens. Yeah. And we're just developing toward it. So we waste too much of our mind on yes. memories of the past. And that might be some of the things we need to let go. <laughs> what did you say? Oh. What was that? 
Just no, I was just agreeing that we have to let go of what yeah. used to be. Yeah. Because he's yeah. doing a new thing. New thing yeah. 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 What yeah. What do you call that on a computer? Defrag or what was it? <laughs> yeah, defrag. Defrag, yeah. Defrag your. Okay. Clean it up. So. Reboot. <laughs> we need to see the the Holy Spirit. Oh, we're getting a bunch of hearts. We need to see the Holy Spirit as the same Spirit, capital S. Always notice in the Bible when it's yeah. little s or capital S. Mm -hmm. Because if it's little s, then it might mean something other than the Holy Spirit. So the same Spirit that hovered over and dived down into creation at God's Word is in us. Amen. So when he said, I must go, I, let me put it this way, I must go so he can dive in. Yeah. And recreate you. And here's something I want to <laughs> If you ask, if you want some of this stuff, if you ask for it, mm. he's going to see to it that you get it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Have, have you ever noticed, you know, this is really good that we're saying because have you ever noticed it's just your flesh that's working against you? Yes. 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 The devil can't really do anything except try to deceive us with our flesh. <laughs> yeah. But it's our flesh. It tries to, with with a, you know, dead works of the mind, try to get us off. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to a young man uh, in class down in Lake Worth, and he said, you know, well, how do I deal with, I, I want to be obedient, I want to be obedient, but how do I do it? And I could tell he was really sincerely struggling with it. And I said, obedience is easy. He, he kind of looked at me like, okay. <laughs> Obedience is easy. It's when we don't obey, we know we're not in line with our design. And that's when it gets tough. Because we think, the way we think is, we're really this over here. And we're trying to be obedient. But we were designed in a line to be obedient, but got out of line. That's good. So really, obedience is easy when you line yourself up to who he says you are. Yeah. yeah. In other but words, we should all be these over side here. Notes. It shouldn't be over there looking at obedience over there. Uh-huh. So, hey there. Hi. So we're talking that the Holy Spirit is the governor of the kingdom. He's the extension of the king and the earth. This is why... Um, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself because there's not. a lot to cover. Are we good so far? Stay with the script. Good. Okay. So now let's go. This brought expansion. Expansion. Colonization through God's embassies bringing the cultivation of his order. So the churches were never meant to be a subculture. Wow, that's good. <laughs> they were meant to be representations of the kingdom and his culture. So, again, talking about it governmentally, the habitation. Everybody say habitation. habitation. The habitation of the spirit is about our being under authority to operate. Yeah. He can only habitate. Is that a word? Yeah. 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 He can only habitate when we're under his authority. He'll still be there, but he can't operate. Mm. Oh, wow. Because he can only operate under the king's authority. Wow. Yes. Principles. Yeah. So if... Exactly. if who he is indwelling, if that soil is not compliant mm -hmm. to the design of the king and the government of the king, then the Holy Spirit may be there, but he can't operate. Yeah. Because he can only operate according to the authorization of the king. Does that make sense? And that explains, um, you know, because um, the question of um, do, we, do we have the Holy Spirit when we get saved? Or we receive the Holy Spirit later, or how does that work? Well, it says he who has not the Spirit of God is none of his. Exactly. Yeah, so, we, so we have we the Holy Spirit. We do have the Holy Spirit. It's just not necessarily, we don't, we don't, we don't activate it. Yeah. 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 And accepting yeah. and let it, let, mm -hmm. let it work through us. Yeah. It, it, it's so funny. I'm looking at you and you say what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's like getting a credit card and you go to the store and mm. you pick up all these goods and you go and you have the person the car and you say, "Start is not good, but it's a brand new car." Yeah. yeah. It got two thousand, but 
Radioactivity. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You got the money in the bank. You it's just didn't activate. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Activity. Yeah. 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 So is the Holy Spirit lying dormant within so many of us because yeah. we don't know we need to activate. Yeah. So we just think, okay, it's preached that it's in us, so it's in us. So. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it's and in me. it got to be activated. And in the subculture, as you call it, you know, with mm -hmm. subculture. The church, you know, sometimes we nitpick these things, yes. and we have a whole session of a round table thing. Okay, you know, what are, are we really is the Holy Spirit in us, or is it now, or is it later? Yeah. And those are really majoring and minors because we are not being having that transformation mm -hmm. that makes us think different. Well, but actually, we're thinking in a different way, more receptive. When we say He came in us, um. The finished work on the cross mm -hmm. bought our salvation. Mm -hmm. But the activation of the resurrection is when we accept it. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, we read this first part. The habitation of the spirit is about our being under the authority of the king to operate. It's literally the character of the house in us. Yes. That sets the order of the fruit and the gifts. Yes. Yeah. Now I want to I want to stop here and again I know some of us may be the advanced group but for anybody who may be seeing the Holy Spirit outside of what has been religious perspective and we're talking from a government of the kingdom perspective when we start talking about fruits and gifts we're going to see it as a governmental thing. Okay? So, uh, it says in Ephesians 2.22, hey, Here we go. the date is 2.22.22 and Today. Ephesians 2.22. Oh, whoa. Yeah, that must be God. <laughs> okay. He's going to do some subculture right now. <laughs> he says in Ephesians 2.22, I'm just having fun. Is that really coincidence? Well, it may not be. But I just have no explanation for it. <laughs> he says in Ephesians 2.22, Whom you are builded together mm -hmm. for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about building a citizenship. If you ever notice, it, the word says we are fellow citizens, citizens. Yes. meaning we are united and fitly yes. framed mm -hmm. as his citizenship. So it says no longer visitation. We're done with visitation. Okay. <laughs> Habitation of the spirit Habitation. is about our being literally uh, his habitation through the spirit. The spirit of God is the conductor the order of producing our life. Wow. Yes. Wow. Amen. It's so organic. Yeah. Yes. Because we're not making up a little hierarchy mm -hmm. to how we're going to run this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just organically coming together. Organically, we are one in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Organically, we are the body of Christ. That's it. That is so true. And now, this one, yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. said, I love this one with being under authority or under authority. If you don't know how to be under authority, you can never be under authority. That's right? it. That's right. Yeah. And again, because we're not talking about religion. Yeah. You know, it, a religion cannot change a government. Yeah. No. They will just try to, try to, uh, do it. Uh, can do I say it. the word brown nose a government? They will try to yeah. just kind of yeah. say, hey, we yeah. want to be friends with you. Yeah. The Roman government was happy to let some of the Jews be in their their seats the uh, because they the were leaders. figureheads. Yeah. As long as they just didn't get rowdy and start, you know, coming against the Roman government. So religion change. cannot change government. Only a government can change a government. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> I'm so full tonight. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Yeah. Now, this is what I want you to see how the Holy Spirit governs. And how he made, he's, it's been right there in the word the whole time. 
In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, he says there's diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. I kind of just kind of capsulize that in calling it the anointing. But there are differences of administration or offices, but the same Lord. So one is an anointing and one is an appointing. And then he said there are diversities of operations. Yes. But the same God. Yeah. Kind of capsulizing that in the word assignments or function. Yes. So there are gifts, administrations, mm -hmm. and operations. Everything God does on the earth. I'm getting goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Everything God does on the earth has to echo the way it is in heaven. Yeah. In the kingdom. Yeah. Thine is the... Kingdom and the power and the glory. You could say it this way. Thine is the government that produces the authority that results in the manifestation of the glory of the king. Gifts, administrations, and operations. Although then we would say administrations, operations, and gifts. Uh, if you could, I could do a whole series on this because I get too excited. But notice, then he says, once you get the functioning of the government correct, then we could talk about the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. But too many churches just want the fruit and the gifts with no government. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or they, they come up with something that's kind of regulations of their own uh, to have what they have as their subculture. So the fruit of the Spirit... I just want to kind of breeze over this, another seven weeks study. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Spirit is about what? Cultivation, Cultivation and producing. Mm -hmm. Fruit, yeah. Fruit. It flows from the character of the house. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, it does. The fruit of the Spirit has to flow from the character of the house. Yes. This is why uh, we call this an apostolic church. Yeah. yeah. Because apostolos or, uh, means sent to set order. So yeah. the governor of the kingdom sets God's order. The Holy Spirit's not allowed to do anything except God says it through the Son. Yeah. That's it. So he then says, I want an extension of my kingdom in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So the last Adam got it right. <laughs> the first Adam lost it. The last Adam got it back for us. And now the governor is in us to make us a multiplication Amen. of the yes. Son of God. Amen. And that's why, you know, we always talk, all of us, about how, you know, bringing heaven to earth. We are bringing heaven to earth. And the, the more that we abandon the idea of religion, of culture, I mean, I know that's hard. I know, believe me, I, you know, I came here and it was culture shock. It really was. It took me a long time to assimilate into a culture that is not my birth culture. So, so, so all, all things are like that. But you know, and the the anointing that we have, God never take that away. But that can become very, very strong. However, culture can be stronger than anointing because if you don't. That's why we need the government. That's why we need the government. That's the, the order. That's the apostolic church. Mm -hmm. When we come into an apostolic church, people feel the difference. It's yeah. not because of us and we're so pretty, but it's because they it, spiritually. We're gonna say so. Yeah, because spiritually we are bringing heaven, the culture of heaven, to earth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that right the kingdom culture. When see, the kingdom of God makes us accountable, whereas religion. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. You know, there is a, I think religion is in the Bible one time. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about pure and undefiled religion is this, that you James. feed the homeless and the widows and so forth. Yeah. Religion, really, in that context, is nothing more than routine. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's a habit. Huh? Habits. Yeah. In other words, it's just something you do as, as an activity. It's not supposed to be something that you... Uh, uses an administrative government. Yeah. So, 
pure and undefiled religion is you put your money where your mouth is and go out and help people. But it's not concerning what we're talking about. So that's why we have to get into the government of the kingdom. So let me say this again. We got a lot of great people online as well. Um, and we'll read all of your comments, I promise you. But look at this. It's about cultivation and producing. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Notice it's not the fruits of the Spirit. Mm, it's, the fruit. it's singular, the fruit of the Spirit. And it flows from the character of the house, as we said. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. <laughs> that is not a list. But here we go, Judy. It's a process. It's a process. So it is a cultivation. Do you think that those gifts are listed in that way for a reason? Yeah, yes. I do. Yeah. I do, because you got to start with love. If we don't, yeah, if we don't start with love, then... Now, notice... You can't have long-suffering. Yeah. That's right. Wow. That's exactly it. It's a, it's a step-by-step process. And you know, you might be in the middle of it, but you actually have all of the fruit. You're just right now in the middle of a party. Yes, yeah. I like to say that I love people. I like to say that. And then the Lord will tell me, you can't even love people without me. Yeah. And then the love that you have towards people is the love yeah. that you receive from others. Yeah. 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 In fact, yes. you know, again, it goes back to what we're saying. God is love. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first commandment with promise. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The second is like unto it. But notice love comes from headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he put that in us by the governor so that we wouldn't have to love out of our own emotions. Yeah. Right. Or out of our own ability. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a person. person. That's right. When we treat it as a thing, then yes. it becomes a part of the world. Yes. yes. That's, That's right. right. What love has to do with it. That's right. What does it mean? What it has to do with uh -huh. it? It is who we are. It is yeah. who we are. And, and it's so funny enough, I remember somewhere along the line in, in, in one of my own personal difficult moments that I was praying about something and I was saying, God, let this person's love. And the Lord stopped me and said, that person cannot love you until they get their way back to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without loving me, there's no love to produce to love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it stops with him. Yeah. He is love. Yeah. When we are out of love, then we cannot fulfill the joy, the peace, the long suffering. There's yeah, no that's it. That's it. And you know, when God... I guess, for lack of a better word, yes. makes you fall in love with people. We fall in love every day. Yes. yes. You yes. know, I mean, yes, I have a man, and, and you know, that's a, that's a different kind of love. The Leo love. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? What did you do? So, but we do fall in love with each other, yes. and it's not weird. No. It's, 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 it's our mentality about love. Yes. You know, yes. or you fall in love with that guy. Yeah, I fall in love with that guy. He's wonderful. I just love him and because God. God's loving me, him through me yeah. or her, you know. So religion puts so many yeah. ugly yeah. thoughts in your mind and it's all, uh, you know, related to lust and to, and it, well, that shouldn't even come into your mind because yeah. it's not, it's not there. Yeah, <laughs> it's just right. not there when love is there. Yeah. Is well, here's yeah. another, here's another kingdom. Let me say this before I forget it. This is another kingdom principle, a governmental principle. Not a sweethearts and flowers mm -hmm. principle. If a man say he loves God, First mm -hmm. John chapter mm -hmm. three, I think. If a man say he loves God and hates his brother, oh are you ready for this? The governor of truth is not, not in him. He's not activating. He's not talking. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Who, who had there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this love thing. This love thing. My love for my husband failed until God poured his love in me. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Precious. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Never fails. Amen. Because we love to him. Amen. Beautiful. So now they go from the fruit, because really, if you try to get, if you try to skip the fruit and just operate in the gifts, then you. Okay, can I say it? You prostitute yourself. Yeah. Okay, say that again. Yes. You're making me say it again. Well, I'm sorry. I was kind of thinking about the other things that we just talked about. So in other words, you want me to say you prostitute yourself again? <laughs> no, I want to say what you said that for. If you try to operate in the gifts and, of course, don't have the fruit that would come from the authorization, you're prostituting yourself. So... Mm -hmm. You have to have the fruit first, and then the gifts of the Spirit. Is the first, the fruit of the Spirit was about cultivation. Am I right? Yeah. The gifts of the Spirit is about releasing. Yeah. It flows through the fruit. Amen. So I call them the power to know, the power to activate, and the power to speak. Mm -hmm. There is no power without authorization. No. Amen. Or else it's illegitimate. So in, uh, I don't think I have the scripture there. Um, I think it's, you have to look it up, but I think it's 1 Corinthians. It lists the, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. We're talking about the gifts, mm -hmm. what is released. Uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits mm -hmm. is the power to know. The power to activate is faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles. Mm -hmm. And the power to speak is prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation mm -hmm. of tongues. Mm -hmm. So, remember, there was gifts, administrations, and operations. There had to be the fruit, then the gifts, and then we will begin to see signs because they follow us. Mm -hmm. We don't follow signs. Mm -hmm. In fact, it says an evil and adulterous, adulterous generation seeks a sign. Yeah. Because they want to see, like Jonas, you know, I guess I'm in the whale. I guess I'll go to Nineveh. <laughs> and that's not the way God operates. So kingdom culture impacts the world, the unbeliever, resulting in manifestations. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, this is what you, I want you to see because this is, this is what it produces. But it's not always the manifestation we have to see. Because it's more for the unbeliever. To begin to understand something is different in the atmosphere. Yeah. So miracles literally are defined as a shifting of atmosphere. Yeah, yeah because yes. it says Miracles could be called the what. What is happening? Well, that's very deep. Signs are defined as significant revelations. But you can't understand the sign if you're not looking for the why. Why is the sign there? So miracles are the what? Signs are the why. Why? And see, in some church ages, we had people looking at the billboard and not reading the sign. Yeah. So God was trying to tell us something, and we got hung up on falling out. And I'm, you know, I fell out too. <laughs> but I'm saying we got hung up on what we saw. And we want that manifestation. We want that kind of revival again. We want that thing to happen. Oh, wow, that was wonderful. And it gives us a jolt and it gives us, woo, hallelujah. Yeah, and I God said, did you even hear what I was trying to say to you? Right. The reason why the miracle came was to show you there's a sign. Mm -hmm. There's a shifting. There was a mighty rushing wind. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the sign mm -hmm. is a significant revelation to re begin to reveal why. In other words, every time... Miracles, signs, and wonders happen. It should tell you you're moving into a new season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Yeah. How do you... The family is going to sign. I'm looking at this. And I know this is what the word says. We do not follow signs. Signs follow us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're in this. We're caring. And we begin to notice the power of God moving here. Mm -hmm. Inviting somebody. That is not to come and see. Yeah, no. But to come and experience the move of God. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Now, if we hear there's a prophet that we know that signs follow them, mm -hmm. if you go to that meeting, that, that, does that mean that you're following that sign? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, because sometimes you need to explain. Yeah, yeah I know. So. If I need to explain this to somebody, mm -hmm. I need to know that I'm explaining yeah. what the, the, the difference is between following well, signs and um, experience in the yeah. of God. Basically, signs, miracle signs and wonders, it says is for the unbeliever. What that means right. is it may be happening through us because mm -hmm. it's following us right. as kingdom citizens, right? Mm -hmm. But it's showing them there's something different. Yes, there's something you. that's not yes. what we would call normal. This is, but it's actually just displaying what's already happening in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's already, it's every day to God. Now, again, it doesn't mean that everywhere we go, miracles, signs, and wonders have to happen. Right. But God knows whenever that shift or that why that he wants to try to bring mm -hmm. to take us to a new season right. might include miracles, signs, and wonders. I, I put it this way. Wonders are, I wonder what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good way to put it. And again, Dr. Monroe gave this great example. When... Britain came, first of all, to the islands of the Bahamas. Uh, people just were like, what you mean? We now have to live like this? We didn't even know this. And it was really, in a sense, I, maybe I'm using the word loosely, but it was like the miraculous, because it was a new what? Because they were bringing the kingdom of Great Britain into their country. And so anything that was out of line with Great Britain had the, the, the atmosphere had to shift and a cultivation took place that began to say, now we're going to do things this way. And first, it was hard for them to drive on the wrong side of the road. And Dr. Moreau always corrected me. He said, no, we're on the right side of the road. You're on the wrong side. Of the road. <laughs> and so it was kind of like a miracle for them. And, and it was a sign that things were changing and they began to wonder what was going to happen next. And so... If we follow, we say signs follow us, but we're going to follow someone whose signs follow. Uh, I think it's a mistake because we're still following signs because we're looking to that person for the sign. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Because for me, I was chasing the high of following God in all those meetings yeah. because I didn't know how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So I, that's what I, and I didn't know that because I was a new believer. I had no idea. That's yeah. what I'm asking. It was just somebody yeah. taking me, oh, this man of God is here. You've got to come to him. Okay. So, like, so, you know, you just run to all those places, but I, I had no idea. Yeah. But now looking back, it never got me closer to the Lord. Yeah. I was constantly looking no. for that experience. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's it. That's the reason I asked the question because yeah. many of us mm -hmm. had fell into that trap and to us we are looking for we don't know what we're yeah. For, yeah because there's no spirit of rest yeah with us yeah. we have not been dealing with the spirit of rest oh yeah that's good truth. that's very good yeah. yes well i've been mad truth you become a part of the sun oh yeah yeah like, yeah you're running yeah, so yeah. After, so and you and us. it follows you because you're representing the kingdom you're on earth kingdom. uh that's that's what ambassadors do because that's another word for apostle is ambassador yeah so um let's move on did that help yes okay oh sure yeah. yeah but are what what are we yes. looking for right. yeah. uh, because i think everybody needs help you know I, I let me give you an example i've heard people say this until finally i thought why and i heard ministers say this I thought, why does it aggravate me so much every I, time I hear this? And so I went to the Lord with it because they said, you know what? You need to come to the meeting and build your faith by seeing a miracle. Yeah. And so they would say, come to the meeting. It'll build your faith when you see the miracles, signs and wonders, people getting up out of their wheelchairs. And, and I thought, I should be happy about hearing this, but I, <laughs> uh, something's not quite right. And I began to realize, wait a minute. Why would seeing something build your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We don't have to see if it's, it. If you can see it, it's not faith. Because we're not moved by what we see. 
we're in it, and we're living from the outside in. So the unbeliever, listen to this now, the unbeliever is unbelieving because they, their believing got undone. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to come back into their original blueprint. Amen. But they got undone and so they're living from the outside in. So it's not that we need miracle signs and wonders to show the kingdom is here. No. But whenever they show up, it's because God is trying to say something to those that he wants to come into. Yes. Because they're still looking from the outside in. And sometimes even believers who run after meetings, again, it's fine if you go to meetings, hallelujah. Yeah, and then especially if you're after the word. <laughs> sometimes that happens because a person, this is me, I'm talking about, mm -hmm. I was hungry for the Lord and I was yeah. looking, uh, yeah. I didn't know what, but I just, God sees that in your heart. And so yes, he does. Eventually, he's going to bring you to the place yes. that yeah. he yeah. And then you'll no longer chase that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And please, those of you out there in Facebook land, I'm not putting down going to meetings. I'm not going down, putting down. But I'm saying, seek first the kingdom. Amen. And then you won't go wrong. Because a lot of people are letting people speak into their lives. They have no authorization. Amen. Wow. That's okay. Beautiful. So, let's see if we can wrap this up. Let's rub it up. So, now we go from extension and expansion to excellence. Excellence, this is the work of the governor of the kingdom. Excellence beyond repeating the past, mm -hmm. but revealing what's been done. Yes. So we're going back to the future. <laughs> See, I had a Star Trek reference and a back to the rep uh, future. Hey, I'm with it. I'm hip. My, my son said to me one time, Dad, don't say hip. Don't say hip. <laughs> Can we say cool? I think that's No, still. you have to say bad. I found out fat. And it's supposed to be good. I found out fat actually means something good. Fat. Right here, now that's past. <laughs> so I'm not going to say, hey, that's fat. because Anyway. We're getting too old. Stay with us, folks. Okay. Yeah, juicy. So we're going into excellence beyond repeating the past, but revealing what God's already done. The Spirit of God sets, shapes, and shifts every season into advancing the kingdom. See, if it just advanced a church culture, if it just advanced a ministry or a minister, it, it was not effective. Mm. It has to advance the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because that's what yeah. Judy was saying about the times when we did receive. We yeah. went to God because we're looking and we're, we're hungry. Yeah. We're still not necessarily seeking the kingdom first, but God knows that we're seeking the yeah. kingdom. Yeah. We're seeking more yeah. of him. Yeah. Yeah. So then it says here, what do you say? Um, yeah, every season into advancing the kingdom. So yeah. We constantly advance in the kingdom when we seek it with our hearts inside. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So remember, as we kind of wrap this up, we have an environment inside of us. Yes. Every government has an environment that produces an atmosphere around us. Yes. Governed by the Spirit to cultivate kingdom life. It's literally an ecosystem of the Spirit. It involves wind. Oh, hey, we can get excited and say amen if we want to. It the wind represents the breath of God. Water, the nourishment. Fire, the refining. And light, the expansion as the word is cultivated into us and then into the world. So Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the original world, the original cosmos. You are the light of the world, a city. See, we're a city, not a religion. A city that is set, established on a hill, literally an emerging mountain, cannot be hid. This is why at the very end of the book of Revelation, I love what it says. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that what? Hears or understands or receives. Like he said to the seven churches. 
Let them actually say, come. come. In unison with the Spirit. Yeah. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. freely. Now, wow. I'm going to throw one more thing out here that maybe is just food to, to chomp on and we'll turn off the camera. And we have no test tonight because I forgot to do it. And everybody's rejoicing. <laughs> but hopefully you got some good stuff out of this course. But don't expect it to ever happen again. <laughs> but I want to say this. When he says, now I want, how many of you got a, your thinking cap on for just a minute? Because you might, this might go against something. But just think about it. A cow? He says, and now move a spiritual, or so, sacred, sacred cow. The spirit and the bride say, come. come. I know the church is referred to as Jesus loved the church so that your husbands love your wives. I know the church is part of the bride. But I believe he's actually talking about all those that were instrumental yes. in bringing about the New Jerusalem, bringing about the culmination of his plan, including his own cosmos. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it is that new heaven and new earth mm -hmm. that is a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. That includes us because we came from that. Yes. And we restored it as his ambassadors. Oh, Food to think on. Yeah. And everybody, we will read all your Free comments. Day. It's heavy. it's heavy. It ain't heavy. It's my, it's my brother. brother. <laughs> okay. So what do we say, everybody? To the king. To the king.